lot of people haven't met him before. Um, he was one of Paul's closest friends, and during the really difficult time when Paul was sick, uh, Rich really stepped up and helped us a lot. So thanks, Rich. And would you like to introduce yourself to us and tell us your history of knowing Paul? Sure. Uh, we met in 86. I had just come back from Texas. he just gotten out of college. Yeah. And uh, one of the first things we did was head for California for a Grateful Dead concert. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> we did that every chance we got. Yes. And, uh, boy, we had fun. Yeah. <laughs> Paul was just a real fun loving fella. <laughs> get together with him. He, he added a whole lot <laughs> everywhere. Did you guys camp when you went to these Grateful Dead concerts or what did you do? Well, we occasionally sleep a few hours. In the <laughs> <laughs> sleep? <laughs> sleep? <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, you just followed behind the Grateful uh, Dead band. Yeah. Alright, next one! Next one, yeah. <laughs> hey. Right. So you've known her since 86. Yeah. yeah. We stayed tight even after he moved to Cortez. Yeah. Or to that, to that area. Yeah. So I guess he moved to Shiprock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. When did he leave here? Or I guess then, 86. Yeah. Oh, about so, so he moved he, pretty quickly after. Yeah, he got a job yeah. and moved down. Yeah, he Shiprock went to the job area. fair mm -hmm. at college and they you know, had people from all these different colleges behind him and he got hired on and moved to... I remember he went to... Cody, because I remember him taking the station wagon, yeah. and he loaded up the station wagon, probably with some stuff you guys had extra, though, and, and then he moved down, and he lived in Shiprock for a while, and then moved to, met Mary there, yeah. and then, um, I know, Ted, were you, you were born in, where were you born? In Durango. In Durango. So you guys were living in Cortez. We were in Cortez. Yeah, you guys had the house. Oh, oh no, you were in Mancus, that's right. Forgot about the Mancus house. We were living in a, a motel? I'm were you? Sure. It was I'm a converted sure. place. Okay. I think it was a converted, mm -hmm. it was some sort oh. of... Some kind yeah. of converted to... Yeah. Mm -hmm. To housing. Housing. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds about right when you're in your 20s and having a baby. You're yeah, in, a, exactly. you know, in a little place yeah. and then... <laughs> and then, Parker, where were you born? Because you had another... Durango, Colorado. Same? Okay. Yeah. 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 Where did you put yeah. that? Yes. A yellow house. Yes. That's oh, yeah. It was a big one. mouth problem or something. Yeah. That's all. That's all oh, I don't remember. I remember stories about that. Yeah. I do remember. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> well, I just thought we could tell stories about Paul, and um, I've got a poem that I think would be fun for us to read. I can just hand it around. People can read a little stanza if they want. There's like 12 or 13. Yes. And then um, we can spread some of Paul's ashes, and then I think we'll keep some of the ashes so that Ted and Parker can spread them in the places where they found special with their dad. So is that something yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, I just, I guess I can start. I remember... Wait a minute. I'm going to make you hold. Okay. Oh! <laughs> Here's Christmas gift. <laughs> <laughs> that was... That was, uh... Sundance. 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 Yes. Sundance. So Paul showed up for Christmas with a kitten in tow. It was like half wild. Was that the one that would fetch? No, that was the one that was. He was actually a mountain lion. I think it was half bobcat. Yeah. We gave him to ranch and eat. Oh, Grandma's ranch? No, the ranch down in Fort Collins. The kids were little. Oh, I remember this. It attacked Lori in the hall. I mean, it lunged at her, and she goes, we get, we need to move this cat. And so it's I, at night. I it stalked to, me. Yes. And I'm like, oh, God. And it just jumped up and bit me like under my arm. And <laughs> so I yeah. talked to uh, one of my partners on a ranch. I said, I need to bring a cat. Yes. And he goes, that cat will be dead in a week. And I just said, well, I got no alternative. Yes. Yeah, that cat, uh, this lived out there for 12 years yeah. <laughs> okay and, it, and they would come back and he'd say okay here's what happened the cat was walking it stopped and it looked almost like a bird like a robin and then it pounced and it started digging it pulled up a, a vole oh you're kidding and, nope and they said after <laughs> a month we had no squirrels we had no rats <laughs> we had no mice wow. he said they love that one cat. time we saw it walking across a field followed by a coyote and we're thinking, well, that's the end. And they call him Slip. Oh, yeah, that's right. Slip. Yeah. And uh, yeah. that's the end of Slip. Well, Slip came back. <laughs> my brother. And we literally saw Slip fly or on an ice floe heading down the canal. 
<laughs> off into the horizon. Slip came back. <laughs> <laughs> Did they have to feed Slip? They fed really, him down yeah, the yeah. barn. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, the, uh, the guy who was the, um, the taker, the caretaker of the ranch, really liked to Slip. Oh, and he named him Slip because he would just slip in and out of the barn. You know? <laughs> so, anyway, Slip lasted a long time. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> do you remember that Christmas when he brought him? You guys all came. Mm -hmm. um, I think house? Mary was there. It was at our house. Grandma and Grandpa Newcomer came. Yes. Oh my Mom God. and Dad yes. were, and we were all in our house, but we hadn't Unfinished. finished the basement. Yes. Yes. There were people everywhere. I mean, there was nowhere the to lay down. With Aaron, because mm. she was having like a... Yeah, Aaron had oh, a dad. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh -huh. the, so yeah. right yeah. after we got him, Kyle wanted to go Kruk. play with him. Yes. Kruk. Yeah, and Kyle wanted to go play with him. And um, so we have a picture of... He, Kyle came out, and he had on his diaper and his big puffy coat and gloves. We're like... Mittens! He had yeah, the... Mitt the kitchen mix. Yeah, oh, that's right. And, and goggles. Goes, yeah. <laughs> goggles. What you doing, Kyle? He's I'm just going to play with the Sundance. <laughs> well, I remember um, Paul and I. You know, are only a year apart, so. I remember um, just in Okinawa playing a lot with Paul. And we would go into the jungles, and we would swing on vines. I mean, I'm sure we didn't, but in our mind, we were swinging on vines, and it was just huge adventures. There were rivers. I remember we were always crossing water. We were always running and playing, and yeah, I mean, it was awesome to have somebody so close to your age, but we just kind of hung out. Well, I think the... I remember uh, meeting him. He came back from the ranch. He was working at the ranch. Yes. Oh, yes. When I was debating yeah. Lori. And um, I think the following summer, we come back, and he's just all scraped up. Yeah. Oh, what, what's going on? We were riding skateboards down the, yes. the, uh, yes. the, stadium. the uh, stadium ramp. Yes. You know, you, you can't control it. <laughs> he was just, like, oh, oh that was oh. awful. I remember yeah. that story, yeah. too. Yeah. So do you remember the song Sarah Smile? Yeah. Do you know what I'm going to say? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. This, I don't know why, but this is just one of my funniest memories to me of, of Paul. And he was in junior high or high school. And we had a little record player. You guys don't know what that is, but you know. <laughs> anyway, you could turn it up to fast and slow. And Paul would put on that little, little um, record, Sarah Smile. And he would turn it up, and he'd come out and sing. Yeah. Yeah. It, was, it was like the chipmunks. <laughs> Instead of Sarah, smile. He turned it on like super fast. <laughs> he <did chipmunks>. no. <laughs> Sarah, smile. <laughs> well, okay, so I was thinking, I thought you were going to say, um, walk right in, <laughs> sit right down, baby, let your hair hang down. When we water skied in yes. South Carolina, he'd be back there water skiing and he'd be going, What? He loved to sing. He did. I remember him singing so loud when we would water ski. Yeah. I don't remember when we would double if he would sing, if we would both sing. I don't remember that. Yeah. 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 Would sometimes mention some memories that he had about that. Yeah. And uh, we were talking about jails one time. Yeah. And he mentioned that in Okinawa, Okinawa when you got put in jail, it's a little bamboo cage. Mm -hmm. And you just get put in there, and uh, the state doesn't provide you with food. Yeah. They don't provide you with a thing. Yeah. Huh. And unless you have some friends yeah. that are willing to come get them food, yeah. you're going to starve in that cage. Okay. And so Paul. He saw that as a youngster and figured, well, I'm going to stay the heck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I don't remember that, but that, you know, that makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. Yeah. yeah, I remember having a lot of adventures with Paul in Okinawa. Yeah. Um, we had like 32 kids in eight homes. <laughs> in the, we lived in this little court, circular, It was and it had a center, a big grassy area in the center. Yeah. It seemed huge to me. Yeah, it did seem huge to me, too. I don't I'm know sure how it was big really it was. Small. Yeah. And uh, I just remember we would always play, all kids would just yeah. all go outside and we would just play and play and play. Yeah. And we had this elaborate game loosely based on Lost in Space. Yeah. And, and parents would all call when it was dinner time and here's how we always would end. We'd kind of get organized, yeah. okay, we're going to end when, you know, Paul says, 
and then, and so we'd be playing, and then Paul would say, and then, and everybody would be like, and then. Was that the way Lost in Space ended? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> but that was how we ended, <laughs> because every Lost in Space episode was to be continued. Yes. And so then we would be like, okay, bye, see you tomorrow. <laughs> that was too cool. I didn't play that. Dang it. I know. Did, did he get footprints on the ceiling one time? Did what? Did he, did he get footprints on the ceiling? I remember someone telling me this story. <laughs> oh, I'm not surprised. I don't remember. Maybe it's Mimi who told you. Mimi told me this. He picked up one of his friends, and they left. He held him upside down, and he walked across the ceiling. I that was in um. Oh. In Sheridan, in the basement room. Yeah. yeah. Or it could be Okinawa or yeah. Laramie too. We had really low ceilings. Yeah. Oh, that's that sounds like something that would happen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just remember he struggled in school, and you know, I was this total straight A student. Yeah, and he w had to work so hard. Yeah, I just remember it was hard for him to read, and he was always in trouble. You know, it was like, oh, he has three sisters, and here he is just struggling. But, and, and then that the image in my mind is that graduation picture. Like, yeah, <laughs> there's a picture of him, it's snowing in Laramie, and he's got his gown on. And you can see it's Was just that like high school. I told ya. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And he graduated from college, which you know that's not an easy feat. It's not. And he just took his time, and little by yeah. little, and I know. I remember being. I remember going. I never yeah. thought that would happen. You know, I remember yeah. trying to tutor him in math in college, in his yeah. college math, and I was such a jerk. You know, I was like, don't you get it? <laughs> Because I was, you know, what? Yeah. 19, 20, and he's trying to do the simple math, and I'm in calculus, and I'm like, did you do this, do this? I'd do it way different now if I had it again, but back then I just remember being so frustrated because he, he just struggled with the simplest things, but he did. He did it. He figured, he was really yeah. good at listening, so I remember he said he'd go to the lectures and just listen. Right. And he didn't take notes because he, you know, right. if writing and reading wasn't his thing. No. And, that was a good lesson for me in my career yeah. to know that people learn in different ways and exactly. um, you yeah. got to kind of give them the opportunity yeah. to learn yeah. in different ways. Exactly. Oh. But man, he's kind. He is. What a kind yeah. person. He always used to sit right here. Oh. It's not a bunch of Oh, I know. You know, we have, uh, he. When, you know, my, our mom was really, of course we all know, wrote letters and sent cards all the time. And Paul was that person that yeah. continued that for me. He yeah. constantly sent us just random yes. letters. And yeah. he would always say, you guys are such great parents. Colin, you're such an awesome person. Yeah. And, you know, he was always just saying really, you know, affirmations and positive and Oh, and he loves you guys. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He's always so proud of you guys. When you guys came to San Diego. You were just such nice kids, you know, you cookie. were just so easy to get along with. And Guard your cookie. Yeah, it was so neat to see you guys as a family yeah. when we would go do things. And you just, you know, you're curious. And, and Didn't like onions? No, oh really? gosh. Apparently. <laughs> 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 all I kind of remember from that. Yeah. Yeah. Every time we go Still into that restaurant, that restaurant. Really uh, remember. Yeah. That restaurant. <laughs> Probably. Oh. It's not that it tasted weird. It was just the that crunch idea. between my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, as a child, I was just impressed. The role response. I was just impressed that it was so automatic. <laughs> it was just completely automatic. I don't know if I've ever had a projectile vomit since then. <laughs> I mean, how old are you? Five? I, it's like something I barely remember. Yeah, you guys were. Really and I think it might have happened a couple you times. Were, yeah. I remember we were eating so many shrimps. So this is shrimp, shrimp, shrimp. <laughs> no, I, can't, I, I can't even handle it now. Yeah. I think something I really appreciate, appreciated about my dad was his sense of humor. Yeah. He'd always find ways to make us laugh, whether it was you know something that's meant to be funny, or he comes back into the house after working outside, gushing blood, and he tells the story in a way that. Would always make me and my brother laugh <laughs> really hard, and yeah. Yeah. so I really enjoyed that. Yeah, really good sense of humor. You guys are his legacy, and it's an incredible legacy. <laughs> it is incredible. I'm so proud to be connected with you guys, and yeah. you know, I'm just I'm like, wow, Paul did some things right. Yeah, you absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, that's true. I have an audio clip, and I don't know if I've shared it with you guys yet. 
but it was, you know, sometime mm -hmm. between that October or January when he died, and he, um, we left, we were doing audio clips, and I have them on my computer at home, and have you heard this one about you two? Uh, I don't oh, know. it's beautiful, and he's like, just says, oh my gosh, my boys, I'm so proud of my boys, they are everything, and they are great people, yeah. so I, I need, I'll share that with you when we get home. That's the goal, to make kind people. It is. It. Um, after Paul died, I got a lot of, uh, I got letters from his friends that I need to share with you too, and so many people that he affected that I didn't even know, and um, they reached out, like one guy reached out to me and he wrote me this beautiful letter about Paul, and he sent me a picture of a rafting trip that Paul did with all these guys, I think it's like Mitch, he's yeah. in there, yeah. and yeah. I knew Mitch, and um, um, I'm trying to think. Dave might have been on that trip. Dave out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I have um, Paul had the hollyhocks in front of his house. Yeah. So Sharon grabbed a bunch of the seeds. Mm -hmm. And so um, I got some to live. So I will have some hollyhock seeds for you. Oh, good. This is his. I thought it was going to bloom today. Oh, but, you know, yeah. not oh, that's quite. Great. Yeah, Do you yeah have this little guy. Yeah. Yeah, I think I've got a little stash of seeds. Okay. I think. Yeah. I got to find. And Kyle said to tell you stuff. that he's um he can't be here, but he's he said he talked to Paul's tomato. <laughs> so Sharon got found you found some tomato seeds no, in his stuff. No, he sent them to me. He sent them like to two me. years ago. The yeah. heirloom. Yeah. And so Sharon grew them and gave me one a tomato a tomato. So I saved the seeds yeah. and I gave them to the kids. So yeah. we all have Paul's. Sharon, Aaron, that's okay. one. We all have Paul's tomatoes. That's awesome. So yeah. So he said to tell you he's, he talks to Paul's tomato all the time. Oh, that's great. <laughs> as as he's gardening, he's like, "Hey, Paul, look, you got a bloom today." So. <laughs> I uh, Paul was with me during the pandemic. He was in my office. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I talked to Paul on occasion, and yeah. I was like, "I'm so sorry, you're so sitting in my guest room. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, we'll get you out as soon as we can." <laughs> Um, but before, right before the pandemic, in March, I had an office trip to the San Francisco area. So I took um, some of Paul's ashes and I put, he said he wanted to see the redwoods and he never got to see them. Kim and I tried and he lost his license right when that was happening. And we had to have, this is pre-pandemic, but we had to, he had to have his license to travel. Mm -hmm. And so by the time we got his license, that, that was like his sweet spot. He had two weeks where he was, he had gained weight and he was strong enough to yeah. travel and then he lost. And I was like, you know what, that's divine intervention. There yeah. was a reason that he needed to be here. Yeah. And um, yeah. anyway, I took some of his ashes and I put them in Muir Woods. And I have something for you too from Muir Woods. It's a little tiny tree with a magnet so you guys can put it on your fridge. <laughs> and then I took some of Paul's ashes and we went to the ocean. And I was with some girlfriends that I had met at this three-day training, and we put the ashes in the ocean. And these women were sent from heaven, and they huddled around me, and we said a little prayer for Paul. Mm. And while I was do, putting Paul's ashes in the ocean, one of the women said, Oh my gosh, while you were doing that, these two crows came over. And they came over the cliff, and they circled, and they circled till you were done and then they left Aww. and she goes I am a spiritual person and she goes I just feel like your brother was talking to us and that was mm. him yes. and it was just incredible that I had this woman with me in this particular and I've reached out to her and I've never heard from her since and wow. I was like she was just sent that spirit for that mm -hmm. day yeah. Yeah. wow wow <sighs> life is fleeting Yeah, we've had some funny times. <laughs> From the fires to the... <laughs> <laughs> what like, fires? We were burning out the arroyo, yeah. and it got out of control. <laughs> oh, yeah. And we caught everything on fire. <laughs> and four hours later, the fire department shows up, and it's already put out. <laughs> we've already handled it. You guys put it out? Yeah. How did you do it? Shovels, Shovels and water grass, and pumps. Like out of the, yeah. the marsh and like throwing it everywhere. <laughs> Just you guys? And the last three, because yeah. Daniel Michaelis, he wasn't gonna. Um, he he was. He's like, ah, that's what happens when you're a I think there was an insurance claim involved. 
<laughs> yep, some uh, some sheds got claimed as insurance, so oh we got my. some money out of it. <laughs> yeah, you can come by every Where was years this? This was uh, <laughs> near our road E house. Oh, okay. We had a great friend that lived right okay. next to us. And, <laughs> and we were burning out his uh, arroyo. <laughs> and then we did it the day before, and I think they did it the previous year, so we had no problems that, uh, <laughs> that third time. <laughs> yeah. I remember having some type of, you know, something, a pants that could melt. And we were all just like shriveled up clothes. Oh. <laughs> we like, yeah, well, I guess we have. The wicking. It worked. The neighbors were just watching us the whole time thinking, oh my God. Oh, really? Remember, um, did, what did we used we to do young. in Grandma's yeah. outhouse? There were always matches in there. Do we catch toilet paper on fire? I don't. I just remember there was always an incident with Paul. It seems like, like we caught it on paper and, and dropped it down. Yeah, we throw so it down. The just to methane. see. Yeah, just to see. <laughs> but I don't know if it was like when you and I went out to Carol's, you know, the OW, and you and Paul, and went, to Paul went to Grandma's. Yeah. The fun one. And then yeah, I don't know if that was the incident, but Grandma was like always watching Paul. I know she was. Whenever he was on the ranch, she was always watching. <laughs> Maybe she knew about the the yeah, she definitely and she knew was about just it. like, I gotta save my ranch here. There's no fire people. <laughs> you cannot be saved. He and a friend of his set fire to a, a wooden cabin down there at uh, uh, Labonte Park. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I, I, it was before I moved back to Laramie, but he, uh, they set fire to it, and then there was an article in the newspaper, something like Indians 1, uh, Cowboys 0, and then they set, it, they set it on fire a second time. The article in the paper was Indians 2. No way! There's two white guys up there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One time, me and Ted got into some of Dad's like firecrackers, and he was like out like remodeling the sunroom on the <laughs> Brookside house. Oh, yeah. has, and so we were like, nice, he's outside. Like now's the perfect time. And we we're like, well, let's not do this outside. Let's go into my room. And, do <laughs> and we were like, well, we can't just let it go off. So let's light it, and then we'll put it out. And then Ted's like, okay, you. Whenever I light it, pinch it with your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> and so we lit it, and I pinched the fuse, and it was just like, <laughs> it's so bad. And then Dad, like right afterwards, comes in the room. He's like, smells like sulfur. Like, he looks like he's about to cry. And it smells like fireworks. <laughs> and we were just like, oh, nothing. <laughs> yeah, you don't smell anything, do you? It's weird. Hot springs. <laughs> you were like that eight, was nine. I was maybe. No, we were out of the house when I was like six, <laughs> six or seven. So I had to have been like six. <laughs> six or eight. Oh, <laughs> Do you guys need to get out of the sun? No, I'm okay. enjoying it. Yeah, I'm enjoying yeah. it right now. <laughs> Good sun side. Take the inventory. Um, I was going to pull out this poem. It's really cool. I, I'm pretty sure I got it from, um, you know, the very end. Paul was under hospice care when he moved to Denver, um, and they were able to give him the drugs that he needed for pain. And at the end, it was really bad. And, uh, and at the very end, they were not taking care of him properly, so we moved him to a different hospice facility that actually was a hospice and he was there two hours or something before yeah. he died. It was super yeah. sad. But that, because we, you know, transferred him, I got support from the hospice people during the year. I got letters and opportunities to go and do Zoom calls, which I wasn't interested in. But I, I may have taken them up on it sometime because I still yeah. do have guilty feelings that I should have done more and I think that's very natural in a situation like that, but they did send me this poem that I wanted to share. So I'm just going to start it, and I'll pass it around, and if you'd like to read it, you're welcome to read the next stanza, um, and if you we don't want to, just pass it along to the next person, and I thought we could just go around the circle. Yeah. Um, I do and have a comment about that. I just feel it was just a real blessing that Paul didn't have to go through COVID in a care yeah. facility. Yeah. I, have I to just, agree. oh my gosh, he would have been alone. We couldn't have gone to see him. It was just, it was yeah. And he oh. wasn't, he didn't no. like living there, of course. He, in the chart. he hated it. He just wanted to go home. Yeah. And at the very end, I think he finally reconciled. Um, you know, it was hard. I was the one that was saying, you're not going to get 
better. You're, you're here because nobody else can take care of you. And he's like, I don't want to be here. And it was horrible. Yeah. And um, at the very end, he thanked me and said, you did the right thing. And I am really glad that I'm here. I would have been alone. So that was really heartwarming for yeah. me. Um, but even like two days before he died, when he was, you know, he was spinning up the last day, like every 30 seconds, he was spitting stuff up because I think his body was filling up with yeah. fluids. And mm. even then, he goes, I kind of feel like I'm going to get better. I know. I mean, he had this beautiful optimism. And I thought well, that really helped him in yeah. his life. And especially, oh my yeah. God. <laughs> Well, and the very last but I, day. But anyway, to, yeah. to address that, I agree. I can't, yeah. I've thought so many times. Thank God he didn't live two more months. I because know. that would have been mm -hmm. two more months. It, or yeah, I mean, he died yeah. January 16th. And mm -hmm. two months, uh, six weeks later, we were shut down. Yeah. That would have been horrific. Yeah. What were you going to say? Then that last day, because he oh, said. Oh, yes. Yeah. The last day, he kept saying. Um, they tell me I'm going to die today. He called all of his friends, he called his boys, he yeah. talked to him, and he kept going, they, they tell me I'm going to die today. And I kept thinking he meant us because we were putting him, we were transferring him to this hospice facility. Yeah. But then oh. who's the one that said, are you the one or one of you guys, didn't you say? Who? He said something like, huh? You, I think you guys so are the one that goes, they. who did they, they mean? He said they. Who, what did they mean? Who was right. he talking about? Yeah, and then exactly. all of a sudden I was like, Oh my gosh! Yeah. I don't think yeah. No, none of the hospice no people. Were no one. No one that. said that. Yeah. No one and said so that. And so we we realized that maybe it was Grandma and Grandpa and Mom. Sean Bradley yeah, and exactly. other people saying, "Today's your day." Yeah. He, he called. He's yeah. Guys. Yeah. I know. And he, and he said, "I'm ready for this." Oh, he did. Yeah. Oh. I wasn't. I know. <laughs> I did have a moment. I heard with he was ready. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was very worried and and you know, we were praying and and um I just remember looking at it in his eyes saying, It's gonna be fine. It really is gonna be fine. Oh. And you know, just the look on his face was like, Yeah, it is. He knew yeah. it was gonna be fine. Yeah, yeah the, the last couple of weeks it seemed like he came to terms with it. He did. It was crazy. Yeah. It was pretty wild. His friend Mitch, that last day, I was privileged to be able to hear the other side of his conversations and Tommy Collin were with us at the end um, when we were moving his stuff and um, I heard Mitch say, it was either Mitch or Dave, Dave. I can't, it was Dave. Maybe, maybe Dave. And Dave said, Paul, it's all love, it's all love, buddy. And that filled my heart, it was so, such a release. I remember when mom died, one of my girlfriends, Rochelle, she said to me, don't let guilt come in. She goes, don't let guilt come in, but it's so hard. It is. <coughs> it's supposed to rain all day. I know. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. <laughs> Thank you, mom. <laughs> So here's this poem. It's called um, An Affirmation for Those Who Have Lost. Uh, I believe there is no denying it. It hurts to lose. <laughs> I don't think my arms are long enough. You know how our stance is separated. It hurts, <laughs> <laughs> it hurts to lose a cherished, cherished relationship with another or a significant part of one's own self. It can hurt to lose that which has united one with the past or that which has beckoned one into the future. It is painful to feel diminished or abandoned, to be left behind or left alone. Yet I believe there is more to losing than just the hurt and the pain. For there are other experiences that loss can call for. I believe that courage often appears, however quietly it is expressed, however easily it goes unnoticed by others. 
courage to be strong enough to surrender, the fortitude to be firm enough to be flexible, the bravery to go where one has not gone before. Hmm. Loss can be a time of learning unlike any other in that it can teach some of life's most valuable lessons. In the act of losing, there is something to be found. In the act of letting go, there is something to be grasped. In the act of saying goodbye, there is a hello to be heard. For I believe living with loss is about beginnings as well as endings. And grieving is a matter of life more than of death. And growing is a matter of mind, heart, and soul more than of body. And loving is a matter of eternity more than of time. Finally, I believe in the promising paradoxes of loss. In the midst of darkness, there can come a great light. At the bottom of despair, there can appear a great hope. And deep within loneliness, there can dwell a great love. I believe these things because others have shown the way. Others who have lost and then have grown through their losing. Others who have suffered and then found new meaning. So I know I am not alone. I am accompanied day after day, night after day. Can you read the one, my favorite stanza? Would you read it, Alan? It's this one. Courage. This is my favorite one. I think it's worth a repeat. <laughs> I believe that courage often appears, however quietly it is expressed, however easily it goes unnoticed by others. Mm -hmm. Exactly. John John Massey might have been with the Vays that told yeah, him. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. they love Paul. Yeah. They love Paul. <laughs> Ruth and John yeah. love him. Yeah. Does somebody know a prayer that they can share with us? Uh, you can say the Lord's Prayer. Yeah. You, I, do you guys want to? Yeah. I don't know it. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, just I'll just say it. Should we repeat after me? <laughs> yeah, exactly. We <laughs> can do a follow. Will you hold your mama's hand? Can we scoot in so we can use those things? There we go. Or at least touch shoulders yeah. or something. <laughs> <laughs> Heavenly there Father, you thank you so much for bringing us here today and finally helping us to uh, say goodbye to Paul um, and be together. And we just love him so much and we miss him so much. And thanks for all the memories and thanks for just letting us um, just experience such a wonderful man. Amen. 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 That was beautiful. <laughs> you want to say? <laughs> That's probably one good reason not to do it. <laughs> we can sing our golden voices. slumbers. <laughs> I tried to sing this right when Paul died. Mm. I got there right after he died. They called me and they said it was a trainee, as I learned later. Oh, no. This guy called and um, he said. So I, I left Paul at 8.30. He was super agitated. He just could not get comfortable. Mm. And I was, it was very upsetting to me. And I said, and she said, he's not going to die for the next few days. And, um, you know, people say that um, we choose when we're going to die. And I think that knowing what happened, I think it was a pretty um, violent end for Paul. I just think um, that it probably was. And I think he would not have wanted me there. I really believe that. Um, although I regret that I wasn't there, but I left and they then they called me at about 10 o'clock and they said, he's almost there. I picked up the phone and he said, he's almost there. And I was like, what do you mean he's almost there? I didn't know what he was talking about. And he goes, 
uh, Paul's almost going to die or something like that. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> and so I went and I told Tom, and I jumped in the car, and I got there. You called me? On the way. On I the jumped way. in the car and got to the gas station. That's <laughs> when he called me and said he was gone. Yes, mm -hmm. that's right. So I got there, and they were like, wow, you must live really close. <laughs> and they wouldn't let me in the room, and they didn't talk to me. They didn't tell me anything. Yeah. Yeah. It, and it was this trainee, and I was like, I never, of course, comp I should have gone back in the spirit of my career as a trainer. <laughs> so, let me just give you some feedback, buddy. But anyway, so they kept me out of the room, and I'm like, I had no idea what was going on. But I think uh, and he had passed away, and they were cleaning it up. And by the time I got in there, he was he had died, and he was in his bed and and they um, had him you know as he looked great he looked really peaceful and um, so I got mom's quilt and I put the quilt on the bed and um, mm -hmm. and I tried to sing golden slumbers and I couldn't <laughs> I couldn't get past the first words and I talked to Kim and she goes sing to him and I was like I can't I'm trying, but I can't um, but I would like to try right now yeah. if you're willing to yeah. Kim and I sing this song um, we sang it with Paul at my mom's funeral. And this mm. was the song when he woke up from his, um, his seizure. grandma seizure, the first time he died. Yes. He, and, uh, <laughs> he said, I have the song stuck in my head. And I was in Grand Junction with him. So we, we went to a music store and bought the CD so we could play it. Cause yeah. he was like, it was stuck in his head. He's like, what's that song? What's that song? And we found it again. <laughs> Okay. I should get near you because I can't hear you. This is, this is why I've heard a few lyrics, I recognize it. Yeah. I knew it, but didn't know the words. <laughs> but, uh, but I do want to say one last thing, and that is that, um, oh, it doesn't have to be the last thing, but um, <laughs> Bella was such a gift to us during the pandemic. Because, you know, we're all three stuck in the house, and as everybody knows, it's great to have a pet that you can love on and share your anxiety with. And she, was, she has been beloved in our family. Absolutely. The doorbell. Don't make sweetheart. Should we just walk right on right the side of it? Yes, I agree. We'll do it in the grass and stand back. Yes, yeah, so just to let everybody know who hasn't ever spread ashes before, it's um, it's not like that kind of ash in the fireplace. Mm -hmm. It's more like it's rough and there's pieces of bone in there and mm. it can be really weird and if you're not comfortable touching it, yeah, don't, that, worry. don't worry about it. Yeah, you can just watch and, and uh, you might want to not be downwind because it does get in the wind and I got some of my mom's in my eye. It was very traumatic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mimi's last prank. Mimi's <laughs> 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 Yeah, Mimi's dying with laughter.